All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our King of Life Bible study. Hey, I'm Pastor Perryman. I'm Pastor Sophia. Hey, and welcome to our King of Life Bible study. Man, listen, we are going to have an amazing time tonight. I'm looking yes. forward to seeing um, many of you on tonight. So do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Get more people to come on and be a part of our Kingdom Life Bible study tonight. That's right. Hey, got my wife with me tonight. So, hey, it's going to be lit. <laughs> it's going to be off the chain. It's going to be fire. So, hey, shout out to our Instagram audience. Yes. Hey, give some shout outs. Yeah, shout Tiffany out. Tiffany Barnes. Tiffany Barnes is on. Shout out to Tiffany. Jackie. Jackie is on tonight. Brenda Hall is on tonight. Hey, Miss, hey Sherrick and Nicole is on. Miss Jenner, Miss Ger Geraldine Moore, one of oh, our wow. favorite films is on. We love you. <laughs> Bam is on. Miss Bam is on. Good to see. That's our, one of our spiritual daughters. Miss Tiffany yes. Barnes is our spiritual daughter. That's right. Brenda Hall and Miss JL. These, these are our spiritual daughters. So good hey, evening guys. to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do me a favor. <laughs> share, like, tag, invite, get other people to come on yes. and be a part. Hey, we're going to get ready to give some announcements in just a moment. That's right. Hey, shout out to Miss Tracy Anderson, who's on as well. Hello. <laughs> so y'all share your like, your Thanks tag, your invite. Listen, we are on Instagram Live tonight as well. Yes. So y'all share, share, share. Hey, my wife is going to give us some quick, quick announcements, and we're going to get into this word tonight. All right. Well, I want to first say a special thank you to everyone who joined us here on Facebook and Instagram on tonight. So let's, let's keep the momentum going. And, yeah. um... It's been growing, and Pastor has been teaching an awesome word on upgrading our participation. So I just want to take time out to tell everybody to please go ahead and do it again. Share, tag, like. Invite your family and friends to come join us live on tonight. Amen. Amen. Also, my son Javon is going to the Navy, you guys. He is going to the Navy on Monday, November the 18th, which is next Monday. So keep, this please keep, Monday, yeah. yeah. So Monday, please yeah. keep him in your prayers, okay? Also, um, Kingdom Life Faith Center We Care team is going to the Doors of Hope Women's Shelter coming up for Thanksgiving on on Saturday, November the twenty third at four thirty. So I want to I want to take time out to thank all the ladies who are preparing a big meal for the women's shelter. Also, we are having our Christmas celebration coming up on December the 14th, and it's called Winter Wonderland, so we're inviting everyone to be a part of it. You can, you can um, RSVP on Facebook and um, on our website, too. On our website, yeah, on the website, and um, we'd love to have you. We're going to have a fun food fellowship. We're going to be giving out awards, certificates to yeah. all those who have participated throughout the year, and it's going to be amazing. So I'm inviting you, Pastor is inviting you to come yeah. out, and we're going to have an amazing time. Also, on December the 21st, we're having our vision casting, and that's going to be on Saturday, December 20, 21st at 9.30 a.m. So we're asking all our leaders to be present so you can be able to catch the vision of our overseer for our 2020. And that's it for the announcements. That's it. Listen, we do want you to be a part of a Christmas party. Yes. We've been announcing it. So, hey, here's what I want you to do. Go to our website. KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. That's right. Hey, register there. You'll see the banner there, the flyer online there. Register there. Hey, the registration is free, right? It's free. We're inviting all of our yeah, friends, all, all of our, our family, yeah. all those who have supported us throughout the year. Just come on out and have fun with us and fellowship with us. It's going to be great. Yeah, so come on out. Be a part yes. of that. Register. Uh, as many people as you want register. Right. We just need to know how many people are coming so that That's we right. can be able to have enough food. Uh, you know, because <laughs> Tiffany Barnes is making some enchiladas. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> if, if you're vegan, Sister Brenda Hall got you too. Oh, no, she's making cakes. <laughs> she ain't vegan no more. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's get to it tonight. Let's yes. pray and we're going to get to it and get you out of here on time. Shout out to our Instagram audience. Miss Hines is on. Good to see you. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to give your honor, glory, and praise tonight. Yes. We pray in Jesus' name, God, that the people's eyes will be open to see, their ears will be anointed to hear, and their hearts will be receptive to receive. And yes. God, we give you praise and glory for it in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. All right. We've been in this teaching series um, really on upgrade. We've been talking about that from the beginning right. uh, of 2019, the start of 2019, because we have declared 
uh, that 2019 is the year of the upgrade. That's 2019 right. is the year of the upgrade. So we've talked about upgrade in your faith, upgrade in your family, upgrade in your participation. Yes. I mean, upgrade uh, in your finances. We've done all of that. But now we're in, the, we're in another part where we're talking about upgrading our participation. And, and we've been talking about we can achieve if we believe. Right. Now, we use Mark chapter number nine as our foundational text. And uh, this is where uh, the son, a father's son, has been being tormented by the enemy. Uh, he's having seizures on a regular basis. And the devil is doing all that he can to kill this son. Shout out to Brother Richard, who's on the best oh, dressed deacon in all of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so um, the father gets to a point where he's frustrated, he's irritated, agitated. He's done all he can to help his son. And he's in a helpless state. And he comes to Jesus and he says to Jesus in Mark 9, 23. He said, well, it, it before Mark 9, 23, he says to Jesus, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us yes. and help us. And Jesus starts to put that back on him. When you look at it, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. So we've been utilizing this scripture as a foundational text where we've been talking about we can achieve if we believe. Right. And we have launched a campaign uh, to, to receive $25,000 by January so that we can be able to move into our new building, put new things into our new building. And so we've been preaching to our members and talking to our members about we can achieve if we believe. So now, subtopic for us tonight is upgraded our participation. Now, we have defined the word upgrade. The word upgrade means to raise to a higher standard. It means to improve by adding key components that will improve your quality of living or improve your quality of life. And uh, we, we gave an illustration uh, about a Surface tablet that I had. And I hadn't used that Surface tablet in probably like maybe six months, four to six months. And finally, I turned that tablet on and, uh, and all of a sudden it said upgrades, updates available. And then it tells me to uh, hit the button for the updates to take place. Right. And then it says to me, the upgrades will take place in four hours. It'll take four hours before the upgrade is finished. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and I started to realize that the upgrade that God wants to give to us doesn't always happen overnight. It, it's a process to it. And many times we're expecting God to do to do something overnight in our lives. We're expecting right. him to do it really quickly, but we don't understand there's a process to it. But watch now. But if we hold our course, if we stay connected, then we will under, we will see that God will do it at an accelerated level. Because I came back 30 minutes later, and then the tablet says it will be completely upgraded in an hour and 30 minutes. Now, it just told me four hours. <laughs> but because I made up in my mind that I was just going to sit back and let it do what it said it was going to do. Right. All of a sudden, acceleration took place. So you and I have to allow God to upgrade us. God knows exactly what to do. He knows what to add to us. He knows what to take away from us. That's he right. knows what to do in order to upgrade us. And I believe every one of us wants to be upgraded. And I believe that every one of us needs to be upgraded. Now, let's continue on. Now, we're defining the word participation. The word participation means the, the, action, the action of taking part in something. It's the act of joining with others and doing something. It means to be related to a bigger picture or be connected to something that is bigger than yourself. And so watch now, as we upgrade in our participation, we are not just doing this just for ourselves. That's right. I need us to understand that. That's right. God is not just upgrading you for you, but he's upgrading you so that other people will also be blessed by you. So it, it behooves us to see the bigger picture. The oh, yeah. bigger picture is what is crucial and it is what is key. So to our church members, the bigger picture is not the shared building. The bigger picture is for us to get this new building so that we can be able to transform and change the lives of other people. That's because right. when you're in a shared location, you are limited to what you can do. But when you have your own, there is no limitations now. So now we can bring the people off the streets. We can bring them in. We can minister to them. We can trans in life. We can do the leadership boot camps that we've been talking about because now we got the space to do it and we don't have to have a time limit. So this thing is bigger than any one of us. So God willing to God who God wants to upgrade you and the upgrade is not just about you. It's about what he wants to do through you. Somebody should be saying tonight, upgrade me God. Upgrade, upgrade me God. Upgrade me God. 
<laughs> now David now encouraged his leaders. When you look at First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter twenty nine, and you start reading verse one through nine, the Bible tells us that David now makes a decision. To give to the kingdom of God, a give to the building of God's house. He makes a decision to do that. David says he has taken of his own proper goods to support and to sow into the kingdom projects. And he says, Solomon, my son, is young and tender. In other words, Solomon is immature. He's never done this before. And so he's saying he's young and tender. And so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take of my own proper goods, my own proper treasure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give to the work of God so that my son won't have to do that. Yes. And then, then David asked the question now. He says, which one of you will follow me? <laughs> He's talking to his leaders. So watch now. David encouraged his leaders to participate in the building of the house of God. So it is only right for the leader to ask for those who are connected to him yes. to participate in the building of God's house. Because watch now, when we build God's house, it's not just about us. It's about what he wants to do, do through us. This will be a legacy that will live on beyond each one of us. Mm -hmm. So as we go home to be with the Lord, the legacy is still built. So other people's lives can be transformed and changed now because we came together and we worked together. So God expects us to participate in kingdom projects. He expects the leaders to come alongside of their pastor and grab a hold uh, uh, of the, 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 the projects and say, let's go to work. Let's go to work. Uh, he expects us to do that because here's what he's done. He's given us the wisdom. He's given us the understanding, but he's also giving us the resources to fulfill kingdom mandate. Yes. Now, it's important for you to understand that, that you need somebody to come alongside of you to help you fulfill destiny. God has not called you to do life alone. So many people are willing to do life alone, but you're not realizing God did not call you to do life alone. You were not created and designed to do life alone. He created you to have partners to help you fulfill destiny. And when we start to work together as a team, the Bible said the commanded blessing is present. Now, some of you might be saying, where's the commanded blessing? I know I'm off my lesson, but let's go to Psalms 133. We'll move it out. <laughs> my wife has my lesson in her hand, so she realized she's looking at me like that ain't even on your paper. I know. <laughs> Psalms 133. Let's look at what the Bible says. Psalms 133, verse number one. Watch what it says. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. And the dew of Hermon and the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So the commanded blessing is where unity is. So when we come together to help fulfill kingdom projects or help to bring kingdom projects to pass, then God's commanded blessing is present. Where God is, where God, where the unity is, God is present. Where unity is, God is present. Yeah. So watch now, the commanded blessing is simply God ordering his presence. Wherever you yes. go, favor has to be there. Sometimes favor will show up before you get there. Wherever you go, doors have to open for That's you right. because of unity. Anytime unity is not present, chaos is always present. That's Anytime right. unity is not present, chaos and confusion is present. So if I were you to get rid of the chaos and the confusion... Have unity in your house. It's important. It's important. Yes. It's important. Now, <laughs> let's continue on with the lesson now so I can get back on track so my wife can keep up with me. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. <laughs> let's continue on. Now, watch now. Now, we started to talk about last time, what we left off in a Bible study last time. We said that when you're in a transition and no one knows what to expect, the decision will be made. All right? That's important for you to understand mm -hmm. When you're in a transition and nobody knows what to expect, a decision will be made. All right. Watch now. This is key now because God told us, our church, he told us. I was in prayer one day and I, I never forget I was in prayer and I was, I, was, I was on the altar praying to God in our church building before we had to move out of it. Right. And I was saying to God, like, God, please help us. We need a place. This, you know, uh, we're going through this, 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 this turmoil, this, this chaos and confusion right now. We, we need a place to be in and, and the people will walk away, God, if we don't have a place for them. And then God speaks to me and he tells me the place that I'm taking you to is better than where you are right now. That's right. <laughs> now, now, that was in 2016. Yeah. He says the place that I'm taking you to is better than where you are right now. So that meant now we were about to go through a transition. But it also told me that God would be with us in the transition. But I come to understand now, not everybody can handle a transition. Not everybody can handle it. 
because folks want things to happen real quickly. They want it to happen overnight. Yeah. And if it doesn't happen in a specific time, then people become frustrated and irritated and they'll end up walking away from something because it hasn't happened yet. And if they're not careful, they will start to murmur. They'll start to grumble. They'll start to complain because it is not working and it has not happened yet. But I need you to understand the place where God is taking you to is better than where you are right now. Yes. There is a new place in God that he's trying to get you to. There's a new place he's, he's trying to get you to move into. There's a new business he's trying to get you to start. There's something new that God is trying to get you to. And it's better than where you are right now. So here's what you have to do. You have to be a people who take your hands off of the steering wheel. You got to get out of the driver's seat and you got to let God drive the car. Because God knows your place of destiny. He knows your place of purpose. He knows where you are supposed to be in order to prosper in life. So so you got to get out of the way and let God drive the car. He knows how to upgrade you. He knows how to take you to your next. He knows how to bless you on a whole nother level. So we just got to get let God drive the car. So we said now, when you're in a transition and no one knows what to expect, a decision will be made. You'll either make a decision based on fear. You'll make a decision uh, uh, based on frustration. Or you'll make a decision based on faith. Let me say it again. We said, and when you're in a transition and no one knows what to expect, the decision will be made. You will either make a decision based on fear, based on frustration, or based on faith. You have to make a decision. Now, yes. if you make a decision based on fear now, normally it's the fear of the unknown. It's like, where are we going? How are we going to get there? You know, how long is this going to take? That's the fear of the unknown. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know when we're going to arrive at this. So you become frustrated because you're not in control. How many know that's the place that God wants you to be in? That's right. He wants you to be in the place where you are not in control and he is in control. So if you are not careful, you will allow yourself to be emotionally driven and you will make a decision based on fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty, fear of uncertainty. I'm not sure if this is what God wants us to do. I have seen a lot of people who have come along to me and told me, <laughs> God told them to do this. Yeah. And, and they step out and they start doing it. Right. And, and then if it's not, not working at the level they want it to work, then they come back and then they, they change up and say, well, well, God don't want me to do that anymore. He want me to do something else. God is not schizophrenic. That's he's not so bipolar. True. He's not bipolar. If he, if he told you to do something and you have not completed it, he's not going to have you stop doing it and give you a completely different assignment. Right. Either you did not hear God or you heard God and you became frustrated because it is not working for you. So you become frustrated because of the fear of the unknown, the fear of uncertainty. And then there is what we call the fear of unpredictability. The fear of unpredictability is I'm not sure what may happen. I'm not sure what's going to take place. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this is going to work. I'm not sure. But you got to you got to do like what God told Joshua in Joshua chapter one, mm -hmm. verse number nine. When Josh, God speaks to Joshua in chapter one, verse number nine, Joshua now has now become in charge of the children of Israel, or, or, or the of the Hebrew people. He's now in charge, and so now God has to speak to him. He has to tell him, Moses, my servant is dead. <laughs> it's time now for you to lead the people. Yeah. When he gets down to verse number nine, he tells Moses, he tells, he tells Joshua, he says, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage and be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So watch what God does. He deals with Mo, he deals with Joshua's fear. And he tells Joshua, you cannot be afraid of the unknown. You can't be afraid of, 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 of uncertainty. You can't be afraid of unpredictability. You can't be afraid of that. And the reason that you shouldn't be afraid of that, it is because I'm with you. Listen, you may be in a transition tonight, but you cannot be unsure of yourself. You cannot have the mindset that I don't know what's going to take place. How are we going to get there? Where, where are we going to get the money from? I don't know if I'll be able to do that. You cannot have that mentality. And the reason that you cannot have that mentality is because God promised to be with you. He said that he would be with you and I even until the end of the world. He says, Lord, I'm with you even until the end of the world. He tells us that he would never leave us nor will he forsake us. So why would he walk away from you while you're in a transition? you got to hold your course. you got to stand your ground. you got to keep on believing what God has promised you. I say this I say this all the time. We have to believe in the dark what God told us in the light. Mm -hmm. that, that's crucial and key right there. But what do you mean? Psalms 119 says, the entrance of thy word, it, it brings light. It giveth light. 
The Bible said the word of God is a light unto our path. It, it, light, it leads us. It guides us. It gives us direction. It shows us what to do. Watch now. When God gives you instructions in the beginning, it's light. But there comes a time now where dark days sit in your life, where you are not seeing what God promised you. That's the time when you have to hunker down and you have to believe in the dark, what God told you in the light. When God has told you that, that he, he's going he's gonna to bless your child and he's telling you that your child is going to do something major yes. in life. And it also almost looked like God is lying because your child is not living according to uh, uh, what God has showed you. Your, your child may be promiscuous, may be, may be dibbling and dabbling in the, in the lesbian or homosexual lifestyle. And God has promised you that your child is going to make a major impact in life. And when you look at that child and you don't see what God promised you, you have to believe in the dark what God told you in the light. Because what he told you is coming to pass. It's going to come to pass. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care about anything that's falling around you. It will come to pass because he said it. His word will not return back void. His word won't return void. It will not happen. It will not happen. It will do what God told it to do. It has to because it's his word. Yes. yes. So to, to my church family, Man, God said the place he's taking us to is better than where we are right now. Get ready. So guess what we can't do? Get ready. We cannot allow the transition. We cannot allow situation that happens in a transition That's to right. rob us of what God said. That's See, right. in a transition, people come and people go. Uh, listen, church. Say that again. People a, come and people go. In a transition, people come and people go. <laughs> yeah. People join you. People leave you. Yes. People connect to you because you because you 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 said something that helped them. People leave you because okay. you said something that they didn't like. Right. People leave because they die. People come and people go. I've yes. had people who have joined our ministry because they said we ain't never heard a pastor who keep it real like you. Oh, they said God sent them. Yeah, we've had people. And then they turn around and leave a couple months later. Yeah, we've had people who said God told them to be here. Yeah. Then they they join with you and then they go. Then they disappear. And, and here's the thing: <laughs> you can't get mad at people when they walk away from you. You can't. Can't get mad with them because church is a revolving door oh, for yes. many folks. Folks come. Folks go. People yes. come, people go. Yes. All you are, all you have to do is stay committed to what God has said. We gotta believe in the dark. What He said in the light. We have to love the people, but not fall in love with the people. Yeah, God has called us to do great things. That's so right. in a transition, God adds to you. He takes away from you. Yes. In a transition, He brings people to help you, and those people sometimes only come to help you for a season. You have to be grateful for the people who come and help you. That is so good. When people tell me they're leaving our ministry, I never get mad at them. That's right. I never do. That's right. I genuinely say to them from my heart, yes. thank you so much for everything that yes. you have done. We appreciate you. I'm, I appreciate yes. what you've done. I could not be in this situation. I could not have advanced right. as far as I've advanced without your support and without your help. I never tell people, you shouldn't go. God didn't tell you to leave. Because if I do that, I learn through experience. When I talk people out of leaving the ministry and they stay with me, eventually they're going to leave me anyway. All I did was prolong their leaving. They're right. going to leave me anyway. Right. Sometimes I have to say to people, well, I don't believe God told you that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to release you to go do whatever you said God told you to do. That's between you and God. And, uh, and I'm there for you. I'm wow. there for you. I'm, I'm praying for you. And, uh, and and the door is always open. I always say, yeah. we like Motel 6. We leave the light on for you. You come on back home. Ain't nobody That's holding right. no judges against you. That's I got right. to tune towards you. Come right, right on back in. And, and let's keep on moving. Let's keep on working. Let's keep on fulfilling destiny. Because God has called us to go forward. There is nothing behind us. Everything that God has for us is moving forward. <laughs> that's a word to somebody right that, there. That's a word. Look what Bam says. She says, me and the twins are connected for life. <laughs> oh, wow. See, she's one of the ones wow. who said that, uh, you know, she never heard a pastor keep it real. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's you tell the truth like it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's continue on. Shout out to Miss Jackie Nelson. You know I love you, girl. Yes, hello. <laughs> Listen, we said when you're in a transition and no one knows what to expect, a decision will be made. You will either make a decision based on fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty, fear of unpredictability, or you'll make a decision based on frustration. Hey, hey, Dosha Perkins, man, I ain't seen you since 1987. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> wow, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, you're making, we'll make a decision now based oh, on frustration. Geez. 
What do you mean make a decision based on frustration? In other words, it's an emotional reaction made because of a lack of understanding. Lack of understanding, yeah. You, you, you'll, you'll make a decision based on frustration. Yes. I don't, I don't really understand it. So I'm going to leave the ministry. I'm going to walk away from this. I'm not going to stay the course. And the reason that people walk away from certain things in many cases is because there is no understanding. Yes. No understanding. Listen. Where there is clarity is of vision, there was always acceleration or toward the goal. Right. Let me say it again. Where mm -hmm. there is clarity of vision, there is always acceleration toward the non goal. Yes. Clarity of vision is just simply understanding. Right. The Bible said, in all you're getting, get, get understanding. Understanding. Yeah. understanding is critical. It will help you to stay the course. When you don't have understanding, you will make a decision, an emotional decision that is frustration driven. Yeah. I never forget my wife and I. We was uh, we was driving up to uh, the Bay Area. Remember, I got a speaking engagement up to the Bay Area. Oh yeah. And so, for those who don't live out here, it's about six and a half hours drive from from Los Angeles to the Bay Area. And uh, I never forget we left about about four in the morning. It was it was early in the morning. Yeah, we left about four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We get up in the grapevine, and all of a sudden now the sun is coming up, and we can see the fog. Yes. And the fog was like below us. It's all picturesque. It's beautiful. <laughs> and and I, I hunched my wife. I said, look, look at that fog right there. That is so beautiful. Until we couldn't and, see it. Until, until we came down in it. We came down in right. it, and now we couldn't hardly see. Now we couldn't you see. You know what I'm saying? I had, to, I had to slow down now. I, I was doing 75 now. I got to slow down to like 50. Yes. And, and, I, and the reason I had to slow down behind 50 because I couldn't see. And the only thing I could see in front of me was two with the 18 wheelers with their big lights in front of me. And they were creeping out mm -hmm. around 50. So I had to slow down and stay behind them. And they were taking me through the fog. Because yes. we couldn't see in front of them. It seemed, it seemed like we was in that fog for like an hour. But then all of a sudden, the fog started to dissipate. Right. When the fog started to dissipate, here's what I did. I put that blinker on to get in the <laughs> left lane. I shot past that 18 wheeler because now I got clarity of vision. And because I got yes. clarity of vision, I can accelerate toward the goal now. And that's what understanding does. It eliminates frustration. It helps you to stay the course. And it helps you to accelerate toward the known goal. And that's where God is trying to get us to. That's right. You can't allow the transition of the, to frustrate you. You, 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 can't, you can't allow it to frustrate you. And so many people have allowed the transition to frustrate them. Right. As a church, we're not going to let the transition frustrate us. That's right. We're going to watch God move every step of the way. We're going to watch God do the, do the miracles. We're going to watch God do amazing things. Yes. We're going to watch him do the impossible right. because he is the God of the impossible. Oh, He's yes, the God he of miracles. Oh, so yes. we're going to see it along the way. We're going to watch him turn things upside down. Yes. You need to do the same thing. You got to say, you know what? God's going to do it for me That's too. Right. He's going to bless my life. He's going to turn my life around. I may not have everything I'm supposed to have at this moment. But he's going to do it for me at an accelerated rate. Yes. <laughs> oh, Say, do it for me, God. Do it for me. <laughs> so what's now? We said now, when you're in a transition and no one knows what to expect, the decision will be made. You'll make a decision based on fear. You'll make a decision based on frustration. But then you'll make a decision based on faith. That's the smart person right there to make a decision based on faith. What yes. does that mean? I trust God even though I don't know where we're going. <laughs> I trust God even though we don't know where he's going because we understand that God has the road map to our victory. Let, let me say it to you again, people of God. God has the road map yes. to your victory. He has the road map. Only the insecure wants to control everything. Right. See, if you're a person and you want to control every single thing, it's because you are insecure. You're insecure and you feel as if nothing can work if you don't have your hands in it. You're insecure. And usually something has happened to you in times past that made you think that you have to control it all. And usually if somebody starts to take things off of your plate, you become irritated and frustrated with them because you feel as if you should have it and you can't get done without you. No, that's an insecure person with insecure thinking. You are taking on more than what you can handle. And what it is doing is it's destroying you. You got to let that go. You got to yes. trust God. Now watch now. I don't have anything to do with this Christmas party that's coming up. I don't have nothing to do with it. You know what I'm doing? <laughs> nothing. They, they ain't asked me what I think about the Christmas party. And I'm the pastor. 
I, I, nothing. I ain't got nothing to say about it. I don't know what they're doing with it. I just know they got their group. They're coming together and they're talking about it. So guess what I'm doing? Just yes. because I'm the pastor doesn't mean I have to have my hands in everything. Don't worry, honey. It's going to be amazing. The event I, team has it. Has it all I'm together. not worried. I'm not worried. They might oh, even yes. be doing some electric sliding over there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> he don't tell them what they might be doing. I, I don't have a clue. Oh, I'm just staying out of it because once you, when you have people on your team, you have to trust them to do the job. Yes. We Let's, have so many talented people on yeah, our team. I mean, I, I never forget, so we was having a, 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 a meeting with an individual in our church one time. We were telling them, listen, we trust you to do the job. That's right. I would never put you in place for you to fail. Right. Because if I put you in place and you fail, that means I fail because I chose Say you. Say that again. I don't want you to fail. <laughs> so guess what I'm going to do? I'm not micromanaging anything. Right. I'm putting, putting you in place. Do your job. Do yes. what God is putting you. I'm smart enough to know that I don't know everything, but I'm smart enough to put people around me who know more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't make me feel any less of a pastor, any less of a man, That's any right. less of an individual, because right. I understand who I am. Yes. <laughs> so we got to trust God. We got to make a decision based on faith. I trust God even though I don't know where we are going. Where we're going, yes. <laughs> I know where I'm going after this. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Let me quit. Instagram family, the Instagram family don't listen to you anymore. Okay? <laughs> My church girl is for real. She's still been trying to play. He's trying to play around a little. He's talking about that worship thing. <laughs> One thousand percent. <laughs> Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Look I don't, at Mr. Brother. I, I, I don't want Tiffany to get emotional right yes, there. I don't want Tiffany to yes, get emotional yes. right there. You know how that goes. <laughs> now, listen now. We overcome every situation and every circumstance by faith. Let me say it again. We yes. overcome every situation and every circumstance by, by faith. faith. Yes. You, listen, you can't overcome your situation with your emotions. You, you can't right. overcome your situations uh, screaming and yelling at people, That's being true. angry. You don't overcome situations like that. You overcome every situation yes, by faith. By faith. Yes. Now, let, let's continue on. See, Tiffany's my bad pastor. This is a good pastor. <laughs> right, you know, holding on to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's go to John chapter 5, verse number 4. First John, first John chapter 5. Uh, verse number four. Shout out to Rochelle who's on today. First John chapter five, verse number four. <laughs> Jackie says, stop. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, look, you know your pastor be like that for real. <laughs> First John chapter five, verse number four says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Right. So he says, we overcome every situation, every obstacle, we overcome every circumstance by faith. faith. We overcome it by faith. You overcome situation and circumstance by faith. Every obstacle that is in your life, you overcome it by faith. Yes. In this transition that, I'm, that we're in, in this transition that you're in, you're going to hit some bumps in the road. Oh, yeah. You're going, to have, you're going to have some pitfalls, some obstacles that are set before you. Some derailments. Some derailments. But you overcome them by faith. Yes. You overcome them by faith. So you cannot allow your situation to deter you hmm. or to derail you or to deny you <laughs> of what God has promised you. That's right. Listen, I almost allowed it to derail me last year. Pulling up to the church and not seeing what God promised. <laughs> Here I am, we pull up. I don't see the cars in the parking lot like it's supposed to be. And I'm sitting there in the, in the car, and my wife got to pray me out of the car because I really don't want to walk in there. I really don't want yes. I want to turn around and go back home because I'm like, this is a waste of time, man. I'm driving here to pour into the people. Won't nobody show up. Nothing is work, not working. It's not working. It's not working. And then my wife has to pray me out of the car and tell me, you cannot do that. We have to continue to keep moving. That's right. Then when it got down to the beginning of this year, well, it got down to the, the beginning of last, I mean, end of last year, I said to God, I'm going to do what you told me to do, regardless of what it looks like. 
I had to go back and remember what God told me. Yes. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be connected. Whether nobody shows, whether this happens or that happens, I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be connected. And what I'm going to do is change my speech. I'm going to change my speech. See, watch now. When you're in a transition, you got to change your speech. Yes. What, what do you mean? You, you got you to change your speech. You got to change your speech. You, you got you to stop, stop calling those things like they already are. You got to do what the Bible says and call those things that be not, not as, as though they, they were. were. So, so when I pull up at the church now and, and, and I get there and I don't see a lot of cars, I start commanding the parking lot to be filled. I start yes. to command people to show up. I start to command the worship experience That's to right. be anointed. I start to command. I'm changing my speech. I'm yes. calling those things that be not as though they were. That's right. So when you look at that passage of scripture in Romans chapter 4, the opportune word in that passage of scripture is the word were. Word is the past tense of something that is already in existence. So when God calls things that be not as though they were, he's not speaking and then it shows up. He's speaking as if it has already showed up because in him it has. Right. So, so I had to adopt that mentality and say, you know what? I'm calling things that be not as though they were. I'm going to speak to the finances of the ministry. I'm going to call praise and worship people into the That's church. Right. I'm going to call ushers into the church. I'm calling people. I'm calling people in. I'm calling what we need. Yes. I'm commanding our daily bread to show up every single day. And then I start to realize that God can deliver. He can bless by many, the Bible said, or by few. He can do it. So all we have to do is put our trust in him. That's he right. knows what to do. So in a transition, you got to watch your words. you got to change your speech. You got to use the correct words. You may be going through a challenge in your marriage. You cannot speak over the marriage the negative things. You got to start speaking faith-filled faith words. words. That's right. You got to speak faith-filled faith words. Faith-filled words. You got to say she's the best thing for me since sliced bread. <laughs> You got to say, he's Tarzan swinging on the vine coming through my neighborhood. You, you, you got to say, he is my, he's the ultimate Mandingo warrior for me. You got to say that every single day. What are you doing? You're calling those things that be not as though they were. And guess what's going to happen? What you've been calling going to show up because you've been talking it. You've been yes. speaking it. Yes. <laughs> I know I know some of y'all are like, what, Pastor? You got to speak, speak that it. thing into existence. You got to speak it into existence. Right. If you don't speak it into existence, it will not come. Everything hearkened after the voice of his word. God has given you the power to give voice to his word. So right. you got to open up your mouth and say what God says, regardless of what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Let's yeah. continue on now. we got a couple minutes and we're going to be done. Now, as we go through the transition now, we must have number one, focus. <laughs> we must have number two, faithfulness. Number three, we must have what we call fidelity. We'll get into those in just a moment. That's my that's my Miss Hutchison uh, from Ellis Rogers vernacular. All right, y'all stay with me. People from the LS from 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 the IBM understand what I mean. Now. So we said as we go through this transition, we must have focus. Now, what is focus? Focus means to be centrally locked into a particular point. It means I'm focused on this thing. I'm not moving from that. To have a one-track mind. Yeah, it, it means to have a one-track mind. Uh, it, it means to uh, uh, it means to, to 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 stay focused on an area or a group. I'm staying yes. connected. I'm staying focused on this. I'm not going to allow my focus to turn to anywhere else. It's like it's like a dog who's locked on a on on a bone or locked on a piece of meat. You can't snatch that thing away from him. That's right. I call it the doggonedness. You have to have the doggonedness. <laughs> That's a good one. The doggone it. This is doggone it. I'm going to have my breakthrough. Oh, doggone yeah. it. I'm coming out of this. Doggone it. I'm going to break through this. You oh, have yeah. to have that tenacity of the relentlessness that, hey, man, I'm focused on this and I'm not going to let nothing stop me. So watch now. Focus now governs my attitude. Focus governs my altitude. And focus governs my acceleration. And then focus also governs my achievements now. Let's deal with those in just a moment here. Let's deal with them now. We said, focus now governs my attitude. Attitude is the character and integrity of a person. It is the heart of an individual. It's the heart of a person as well. Let me say it again. Focus governs my attitude. Attitude is the character and the integrity of a person. It is the heart of a person. All right. right. The Bible talks about it in Jeremiah chapter 4. And it talks about, this is what the Lord says to the people of Judah uh, and Jerusalem. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Mm -hmm. Do not waste your good seed among thorns. So guess what he said? God says, you got to get your heart right. 
Right. See, focus is, a, is, is, is based on your heart. If your heart is not right, you cannot be focused on what God has for you. If your heart is not right. That's true. Because watch now, if my heart is not right, that means I can't forgive people. Let me say it again. If your heart is not right, that means you cannot forgive people. If your heart is not right, you won't trust people. Right. So, so God wants you to get your focus right. You got to get your attitude right. Focus governs my attitude. My attitude is based on what's in my heart. So if my heart is not right, my attitude will not be right. You, you've seen people where, you know, you, you walk past them and you speak to them and they barely speak back to you. They got that nasty disposition. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and even, even if you just see them, you don't even talk to them. You, the reason that you stay away from them because their disposition said they don't want to be bothered. They just, their countenance said they got a nasty attitude. Well, they want to know why you so happy. Why yeah, are you happy yeah, they, every day, yeah, all day? They got that nasty attitude, so you kind of like to stay away from them. <laughs> So that, that, that's not the place you want to be. That's not the people you want to be with. That's right. Those are the people you avoid like the plague. If oh, I get yes. connected to you, I'm going to have what gotta you have. Positive. So I got to get away from that. So watch now. Focus now governs my attitude. Yes. But focus also governs my altitude. <laughs> what does that mean? The height or the level of achievements that, can, that one can have based on submission and their willingness to endure. Uh, mm. I can only go as high. As I'm willing to submit. I never forget uh, my pastor at the time, Apostle Wayne Wallace. He's going home to be with the Lord. I never forget. He was in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me one time. And he told me, he says, uh, Minister Perryman, the higher you go, the lower you need to go. And I said, huh? <laughs> I remember that. I don't understand what that means. He says, the higher you go, the lower you need to go. And I said, sir, I don't understand what that means. I need you to talk to me about that. And he says to me, God's going to take you higher. Yes. But as he takes you higher, you got to stay down low. You got to keep your face on the ground. That's you right. got to keep your face before God. You got to stay submitted and committed to God. Because if you don't stay submitted and committed to God, you will become big headed. Right. And then God will have to remove his spirit out of the equation. And then he starts yeah. to tell me, you would end up doing this out of flesh and not out of the spirit. So it's important now that you stay submitted, that you stay humble, that you stay attached, that you stay connected. It's important that you do that because your, the, your altitude determines that. If you're going to go higher in life, you got to be submitted. That's right. Submission doesn't mean you do what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it or how I tell you to do it. See, that's what I learned growing up in the IBM. I thought that's what submission was. You do what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it or how I tell you to do it. <laughs> that's not submission. Not at all. Submission just simply means to place yourself under subjection. an authority that yes. is greater than yours. Right. That's all it means. It means to put yourself under it. When you put yourself under mm -hmm. an authority that is greater than yours, it doesn't diminish who you are. What it does, it takes you to another level in God. You grow. You accelerate. You go to another level. You go to the next level in God because you are submitted. Yes. And, and this is the thing that has happened to women is that we've been taught a wrong concept of submission. Remember, I, I was, we, was, we were married this couple and, and it, and it, 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 it talks to, in, in, in the marriage and it talks about why I submit yourself unto your husband. And, and the lady was looking at me crazy when we was doing a rehearsal like this. And then when we got when we got there to perform the wedding, matter of fact, it was I, listen. Rev performed a Korean wedding. Remember that was a Korean wedding. At the Marriott Hotel. Yeah, I performed a Korean wedding. Yeah, it, was it, it, it was it was a Korean wedding. I performed a Korean wedding because the, the we were only because, black there. Actually. Yeah, we were only black there because <laughs> the mother of the daughter who was getting married yes. was Christian, and she didn't want her daughter not to have the blessing of God on her. So right. she got me to perform the wedding. Yes. And all of a sudden, I get the the nuptials the next day, the day of the wedding, and I'm reading through it, and the lady then changed, submits to your husband. She didn't change it. Oh, she didn't want that. But what she didn't know is Reverend quit. Reverend can read. Oh, yeah. Reverend know how to clap back at the drop of a hat. So guess what Reverend did? Changed it on the, changed it on the right, fly. Right, right. And so when I make, when I make the note, when I start to uh, say the note, so she couldn't help but to say what I said because I switched it back. Right. Said, because see, watch now. She had a wrong concept of submission. She thought that means that he dominates her. Not at all. And she didn't understand that. All right, we we saw Fantasia on Facebook Live a few about, about a month or so ago, and she was talking about being submitted to the husband, and people want to crucify her. 
Yeah. That's because people don't have a concept of submission. Submission, submission doesn't mean you dominate. Right. Listen to this. God never called you to dominate another human being. Amen. You were not called to dominate a human being. We were, we were called to dominate creatures of the earth. It's right. in Genesis chapter 1. Mm -hmm. We were not called to dominate each other. I'm not called to dominate my wife. My wife is not called to dominate me. There are times when I submit to my wife yes. and I submit to her authority. When she, she comes along, she says to me, honey, I think we should do da-da-da-da-da mm -hmm. in ministry. I listen well, to her. very well, honey. See? You listen very, very well. <laughs> See, y'all pray for my wife. She's praying. She's she messing up the you flow. Do. You do. You listen very well. You I do. do. So, so I was like, okay. All right. You do. Okay. And we roll with that. Yeah. Uh, it's not, you, I'm the man. I'm the pastor. I do, you do. I tell you do. All that kind of stuff. That ain't it. Not at all. Submission just means you place yourself under an authority that is greater than you. Right. God created the man and made him the head of the household, which yes. means he's the responsible one of his family. That's right. The man is the head of the household. It doesn't mean that the woman is diminished in any capacity. We have different roles. Right. We have different roles. That's right. And so we have to let each other play play their role. Right. If you, I think uh, uh, Nelly said in that, 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 that song uh, when he did with uh, whatever that lady is from Destiny Child, you know, play your position like a short star. You got to play your position. <laughs> You got to play your position. When everybody plays their position, guess what happens? Everything works. Everything works. Everything because falls in place. Everything falls in place That's because right. of unity. Yes. It doesn't yes. mean I dominate you. You dominate me. Not at all. It doesn't mean that. Not at all. And so we have to get the right understanding of this yes. so that we can flourish in God. All right, listen, we got a couple more minutes. We got about four more minutes and we got to get out of here. All right. So we said, now focus now governs my attitude. Focus governs my altitude. But then focus governs my acceleration. Acceleration now is the speed in which you can obtain your goal. If you are focused, before you know it, you will have achieved a lot of your goals. All right? We, we lost in our church. I claim it Sunday. What was it? In October? Right. We, we, did, October. we did our claim yeah. Sunday in October. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we asked the people to write down on that list the things that they were claiming for, right. for God to do for them. And, and we had to write down as many things as you, you can write to think of and yes. just say that every single day. I claim it's a vision board. Right. I claim this. I claim this. And, and, and we had people who start doing it. We had people who wouldn't do it at all to them. That was just silly. But that's on them. They do what they want to do. But 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 I start claiming stuff on my vision board, speaking it every day. And then before you know it, I started to see God. Doing, doing it. So I'm scratching it off my list. Yes. I'm scratching it off my list. Before you know it, within a week, I had five things knocked off of my list. Because yes. I'm watching God do it because I'm focused on this. When you are focused, acceleration takes place. That's right. But then focus also governs your achievements. It governs your achievements. This is crucial and this is important. When you are focused, you will achieve your goals in life. If you are not focused, you will never be able to achieve any goals in life. The focused individual gets blessed. The focused individual stays the course. The focused individual does what God said. Yes. And they don't let the enemy cause them to waver. See, sometimes, you know, as a pastor, you, you have the spirit of discernment. God sometimes shows you your members. And sometimes God speaks to me in, 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 in late at night. Sometimes God speaks to me about the members of my church. Yeah. And, and uh, there are times where... I turned to my wife and I said, hey, uh, such and such is going through some challenges right now. Yeah. And, and and I'll start praying for the person. All right. And, and sometimes God has shown me the person's heart has started to change. Yeah. And I'll say, um, that person's heart is starting to change. Because God starts to show you. See, when you shepherd That's somebody, true. when you when you when you were the leader of something, God has to give you a viewpoint of it. That's right. So you'll know how to lead people, so you know how to pray for people. Mm -hmm. And then when we sit down and have conversation with them, and we tell them, your heart is changing. Yeah. And some of them say, how did you know that? Because I'm the shepherd. God speaks to me That's concerning right. you. Your, your life is in my hands. Yeah. So I have to be able to live right in the presence of God and in your eyesight so that your life could be blessed. And so many people, when they lose focus, they start taking steps back. Instead of moving forward. And, and you can yeah. see it. They take steps back. You can see it. They were increasing. They were accelerating. They yeah. were moving forward. They were attaining goals. And then all of a sudden, they all of a sudden, they stop. And they start taking steps back, steps back. We had people who start sowing into their pastors. And then soon they start sowing into their pastors. They start getting breakthroughs on a continuous basis. Right. And then as soon as an issue hit, 
they take steps, steps back. back yeah. They took steps back. The enemy talked them out of their sowing, talked them out of their giving, it mm -hmm. talked them out of their connection to their leadership. And yeah, their participation. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they start taking steps back. And then all of a sudden now, everything that they had, started they started losing. to lose. Yeah. And it's because they started taking steps back. Listen to this. Don't you let the devil talk you out of what God has promised you. Ooh. Don't let him do that to you. He's a master at that. Yeah. He's a master at it. So please don't let the devil talk you out of that. You got to continue to keep forging ahead. We got to keep pushing forward. Listen, Kingdom Life Faith Center, our new building is out there. We're on the verge of one of our greatest oh, yes. breakthroughs ever. So oh, we have yes. to hold our course. We have to believe God. We That's have right. to trust and believe God. No matter what obstacle comes our way, we got this. That's why we said 2020 is perfect vision. We got this. Whatever comes our way, we got, we this. got this. We got this. That's right. Now you got to say it every single day. I got this. Yes. I got this. Sickness comes in your body, I got this. Money starts to come up and be funny, I got this. Children are acting stupid and going crazy in their dumb day. You have to say, we got this. I got this. I'm an overcomer. I overcome all of this, but I'm not going to allow this to stop me from stop my participation. Amen. And so many people's participation dies out. Dies mm -hmm. out because things become routine to them. Yeah. When things become routine to you, you just immediately stop. You lose, you lose excitement about it. You you you, you lose your focus. You, you don't look at it the same. And that's because it just becomes routine to you. To you, it has lost its flavor. To you, it's 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 not that important anymore. Yeah, when you lose focus, they they um, close the windows of opportunities opening up for them. Yeah, the opportunities yeah. close because you, yeah. you 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 know it just becomes routine to you. I'm right. on automatic pilot. There's no excitement about this. That's that's part of the reason why many marriages fall apart. Right. It is because there is no excitement no anymore. Yeah. No excitement. Everything no is excitement. routine. Yeah. yeah. Everything is routine. Listen, when you in when you just do things based on routine, you become stagnant. Wow. You you got to get your excitement back. Right. You got to get your excitement back. Listen, you should be excited because God woke you up this morning. That's right. You should be excited this morning because you got air to breathe. You got clothes to wear. You, you know, so every you, day is a good day. Yeah, every day is a good day. Your mind is right. You yes. understand? You may not have all yes. the money in the world, may not live in the best neighborhoods, may not drive the fancy cars that you want to drive. But you have to say every single day. Every day above ground is a good day. Every, any day above ground is a good day. Yes. It's a good it's day. An you day. It's an amazing day. Yes. You got this. You got this. You're not going to allow yourself to become Ooh, stagnant. You're right. going to rejoice in the Lord every single day. Every You're day. going to be excited. Yes. Because yes. I'm looking forward to seeing God do something miraculous. Oh, me too. For us as a church. Me too. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm telling you. I'm ready. We've been speaking this thing. We've been calling this thing. I'm ready. And, be, and calling those things that be not as though they were. Yes. I mean, listen. You got to get to a vision casting service. I mean, we got some things we rolling out. Ooh, That's going to be tremendous. Listen, we need all of our people to participate and yes. be a part. Man, I'm telling you what God is God doing is for us in 2020. It's going to be <laughs> off the chain. So you got to be committed. Things. you got to be connected. you perfect got vision. to be. Per 2020, perfect, perfect vision. vision. We got this. I'm telling you, we got this. Yes. <laughs> listen, we got to get ready to get off of here. Uh, but listen, we're going to receive offerings right now. Want to receive offerings. You know, if we was in our Bible study, uh, in our physical building, we would be receiving offerings on Bible study night. So listen, I'm, I'm encouraging every one of you, get your best seed tonight. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Again, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Please do that. Get your seed in the ground. Don't let this time go by without you getting a seed in the ground. Please get your seed in the ground, all right? Uh, listen, when you sow into the word, man, you get, the, you get the manifestation of what the word taught tonight. You get that. And uh, man, you, you're not, you, can't, you can't buy a miracle, but you can initiate a miracle. You can't buy one, but you can initiate one. Right. So listen, maybe you need a breakthrough in your finances tonight. Maybe you need a breakthrough uh, uh, with your children, in your family, on your job. Listen, get your seed in the ground tonight. Get your seed in the ground and watch God take your life to another level. All right? Hey, we saw Miss Karen Yates on tonight. Shout out to her. We love Hello, you. Family. We appreciate <laughs> you so very much. 
uh, for tuning in tonight. We do. We appreciate you. So listen, y'all, y'all share this with other people. Encourage them to come along and be a part. For my Instagram audience, hey, go to our website, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Again, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Click on the online giving button there. You can give your tithe, your offerings. Hey, if you're supporting the We Believe campaign, that's what we're raising. $25,000 for our new building. Yes. Hey, if you want to participate in that and partner with us in that, hey, get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground tonight, all right? Please do that. Hey, if you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor Pyramid. Again, the cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor Pyramid. So get your seed in the ground tonight. Don't let this opportunity go by where you're not sowing tonight. Don't let it go by. Man, we appreciate you. Listen, we're going to create a cyber church as well. For those people who don't live in my state, who are not physically able to come to our ministry itself, but you can become a part of our cyber church. That's right. We're creating that. And uh, so, hey, you can still participate. You watch me every single day anyway. Oh, hi, Pastor Janice Turner. Hey, hey, Prophetess, how you doing? Hello. Good to see you. Good so, to see you. So, you know, you, you, if you don't live in our state and you still yeah. want to be a part of what we're doing, we're going to create a cyber church for you to be a part. You're watching me every day. You're part of Bible study anyway. So you might as well come on be a member anyway, too. That's right. You might as well be a member and get the benefits of this ministry and flowing in your life, all right? So, hey, we got good things showing up. I'm telling you, good yes. things are coming about. <laughs> so you got to be a part of of the vision in 2020. That's right. <laughs> we perfect said 2020. Vision. Perfect vision. We got this. Yes. You got to start saying that every single day. So, hey, we're going to have t-shirts with that info, with all that on it. That's right. Pins with that stuff on it, man. It's going to be lit. It's going to be fire. It's going to be off the chain. <laughs> you got to be a part of this. I'm telling you. So, get your seed in the ground tonight. Again, go to our website, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Again, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. All right. Hey, I'm ready to pray. Honey, you got anything before I pray? You know what? I just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. You know, we're on every Tuesday night at 730. Yeah. So invite a friend, invite your family members to share this awesome word with. Amen. Yeah. And again, shout out to our Instagram audience. Shout out to Lynette Perry and McCoy. Good to see you, Hello. sweetheart. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in, cousin. Yes. Love you. All right. Listen. We're getting ready to dismiss, but I'm praying for you. Get your seed in the ground tonight. Don't, don't, don't let the devil tell you that you don't need to sow a seed in Bible study or that you can wait till Sunday morning. Man, listen, get your seed in the ground. Pastor would not tell you to give a seed if he himself doesn't sow. That's I'm right. a giver. I'm a sow. I sow every single we day. Are givers. But I make sure that I seed, all right? That's right? I make sure I put a seed in my man of God's hand every, every, every week. That's I put right. a seed in my man of God's hand. I need my windows to stay open. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm living in this house because of the seed that we've sown to That's our man true. of God. So What's the true. odds of me living in the house that my man of God moved out of? What's that the odds so of true. that? It's got to be a miracle from God oh, that I'm even in the house that my pastor's moved out yes. of. <laughs> yes. So, hey, we are walking miracle because of the seed that we have sown. So, That's I'm encouraging right. you, sow your seed tonight. Don't let it go by. Yes. Let me pray for you and we're going to dismiss you, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for every person who's watching us tonight. Thank you. Let nothing that was spoken fall on deaf ears. Let it fall into the good grounds of our hearts so that we might produce a fruit that's pleasing in your sight tonight. And God, I thank you right now for those who are sowing their seed tonight. Yes. We declare and decree the thousand time blessing over them. The and God, and I thank you right now that doors of opportunity are opening for them. Yes. Favor is released into their life. Healing yes. is manifesting itself in their bodies, God. And I thank you that it is so in Jesus', in name. Jesus name. Amen and amen. amen. All right. We love y'all so much. Make sure you share, share, share. Tag. Thank you guys. We will see y'all again uh, next Tuesday. But for those of you who watch In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, hey, Reverend going to see you in the morning at 8.15 a.m. <laughs> so we stand the time. So be there. Oh, if you don't have a church to go to, Kingdom Life, Kingdom Life Faith Center is the church for you. We got That's a warm right. seat of welcome waiting just for you. 9 a.m. So 9 a.m. Promise you we out of there 10.30, 10.40. So you're going to be there all night long, all day long. You can come on there and get your word of God. Hey, if you still got service to be at 11, 11.30, you still got time to come and be Plenty a part of, time. of us. Yes. Man, and make sure you at the Christmas party. Yes. Come to the Christmas be. party. December the 14th, go to our website, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Yes. Click on the Winter Wonderland um, flyer. Right. And register for the party. Right. It, it just, 
It just, you don't have to pay for it. It just lets us know how many people are in attendance. All right. Hey, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And we will see y'all again tomorrow morning. Shout out to Miss Mary Collins. We love you. Good to see you.